started about our program. I know you guys are all educators and in the education field. So what is a nurse? You know, we all have our stereotypical, what is a nurse? Where, you know, we used to wear the white caps and the little cute skirts and <laughs> shirts. That's not necessarily what it is now. Nowadays, it is ample opportunities for nurses in this area and beyond. Um, so what is an RN? That's what we have at QWA is our associate degree nursing program. So what is an RN? It is a licensed registered nurse. Our nurses have to pass a national licensure test to obtain this license, and that's what we do. We get them ready to pass this NCLEX, is what we call it. My students, we are in second semester right now, and they are sick of hearing, well, on NCLEX, you're going so to see this on NCLEX. But that's what we are doing. We are preparing them to take this test, because if they don't take this test, they're not, they do not have their RN license and cannot practice. So, at UWA, we do offer an associate degree, Two years, five semesters. You will be able to go pass your NCLEX, go out in the real world, get a job, and you can work full time. It is completely legal. I did it myself to get your bachelor's degree or your master's degree or even your doctorate degree. So when your students say, Well, I want I need to I need to go to school, but I don't want to go for four years. Well, you know what? You go into nursing. Five semesters, you graduate, you get out, you pass your English, you go to work, and then you can go to work on that bachelor's degree or that master's degree. Totally doable. Like I said, I did it. I am a product of UWA Nursing School, and also I worked full time here at the hospital in Demopolis. Full time, got my bachelor's degree and my master's degree while working full time. So it is doable. What did RNs do? They coordinate patient care, take care of patients. That's you know stereotypically what we see. They they coordinate patient care. Um, they educate, educate patients, educate the families. They educate other RNs. Um, support. Support is a lot. Nursing has a lot to do with supporting your patients, supporting your family, and supporting your coworkers. Um, they can travel. I'm sure we've all heard of travel nursing. Um, they can go all over the United States and travel, or they can stay close to home. You know, we need nurses everywhere. Nurses are needed everywhere. So if you have a student that is tired of the small town or the town that they live in, they want to go see the world, well, they can do that. But then once they get tired of seeing the world, they can always come back home. So RNs can focus on specific conditions. They can focus on, I'm sure we all know about diabetes, oncology, cancer patients. It is, they can, any condition in the world that you can come up with, there is this RN specialty for that. Specific parts of the body, skin, like dermatology clinics or bones, orthopedic clinics. Specific group of people, they can work with these little babies that are born prematurely, or they can work on the other end of the spectrum with the elderly and all in between. So it's not just sick people. It can be anywhere from well, well baby care. So specific group of people, whatever they want to work with. Specific workplace, hospitals are the stereotypical place where RNs are. I'm a nurse and I'm in nursing education. So it is not just taking care of sick people. We have um, graduates that are nurse practitioners that have gone on to get their nurse practitioner degree. We have two graduates here in Demop just in Demopolis right now, that are flight nurses. When you see air evac take off from behind Broadway Field and go up in the air and go wherever to pick up patients and take them somewhere, two of our graduates can be on that flight. So we do have um, two just here in Demopolis, and I'm not sure of how many Elsewhere, um, we have like so nurse practitioners. We have several nurse practitioners. We have several CRNAs, which is certified registered nurse anesthetist, put you to sleep when you go in for surgery. So we do have graduates that have gone on to do that. What about job security? Are they going to get a job when they get out? 2012, 2,711,500 RN jobs were in the U.S. Projected 19% growth from 2012 to 2022. That's a faster than average grade. So we are gonna be needing nurses in the future. And a lot of that is contributed to baby boomers getting older and needing care, and then a lot of the care going from inpatient care to preventative measures and in the home care. Oh, so by 2022, 526,800 more RNs are gonna be needed in the United States alone. What about the money? Because that's what we all want to know about it. So what about the money? Um, median pay for RNs in the U.S. 
$64,470 a year. So that is around $31 an hour. And I'm sure that is bigger cities, and then you have to factor in the cost of living because in Alabama, average salary is $51,782. So that's pretty good for a two-year degree and to be able to get out and work as well as going to school. So who can be an RN? We need critical thinkers. I think Dr. Cobb was saying in his um, division that they need critical thinkers. We do too, because we need to be able to teach them the concepts of a disease process or how to take care of someone, and then they need to get, be able to go out in the real world and take care of those patients. They need to know when do I, when can I go in and take care of this patient, or when do I need to notify the healthcare provider. So we need critical thinkers. We need compassionate people. We need compassionate. Sympathetic, empathetic, but just think about it. If you're in the hospital sick, do you want somebody that comes in and says, huh, sorry, you know, here, take this pill, get over it. We need <laughs> sympathetic or empathetic people, don't we? <laughs> Which I have been in a situation where I have seen other nurses, but we do not teach that. We teach <laughs> compassionate oriented, okay? Um, detail oriented. We need detail oriented individuals because they might have three, four, five patients that they're taking care of. And that they have to decide, okay, this patient needs this and this patient needs that, but if they're not detail oriented, they can miss something. That could be critical to that patient's care. So we really do need the detail oriented, emotionally stable. I struggled with putting this on here, but we need emotionally stable people because think about it. You are in you are in you maybe have a patient that is dying. So yes, I have been in a patient that's I've cried with the family before, but we need to we need students that can handle that. Like once they get home that night, we don't want them to just feel overwhelmed and say, oh my gosh, I can't do it. But that, because that is part of the job and depending on the specialty that you go in. I mean, emergency situations, a lot of nurses are facing emergency situations. Can they handle that stress? We need students that can handle that stress. Organize. Like I said, you might have five or six students Organized care, that is what's going to get the job done. Because we don't need to be going in here and doing this and having to run back to the nurse's station and go back to get this and go back in the patient's room. They need to have all their supplies ready, get in that room and get it done. So we just we do need organized students. Physical stamina, lifting those patients. You know, they're lifting those patients. Nursing is not a job that you sit down at a desk all day. You are on your feet for most of the shift. So we need students that are able to do that and understand that as part of the job. Speaking skills. Communication skills are important in nursing because how you talk to that family, that family might not know that you did that bath or did that, gave that medicine on time, but they're going to know how you made them feel when you talk to them. So they really need great speaking skills and especially, you know, calling a doctor. Do we want somebody that cannot communicate well with the doctor? No, we want them to be able to call the doctor, relay the information, and get the job done. So now, I told you about nursing. Why do you want to send your students to UWA? Like I said, I am biased because I am a graduate there and I know what a great program it is. But we do have a low student to instructor ratio. Um, usually one faculty member per six to eight students, eight students max. We, right now we have, I think, about 67 students in our class right now. Um, I teach mainly second level students, which is what they have just entered into this semester. I have had them in clinicals in the spring and the summer, and I have had simu the simulated labs that we do in the spring and summer. But now I was out for maternity leave in the spring, and I can tell you every one of my students' names. And I think that that says something. We have a lot of one-on-one -on -one interaction with our students or small group interactions. So you can line them up in the classroom right now, and I can go down and tell you exactly who they are. Um, Hands-on training, clinical experiences. We don't just sit there and lecture to our patients all day, every day. We just finished up a four-week rotation um, that they got. They were somewhere different every day on Thursday and Friday. They were um, at Med Center clinics in Demopolis, Tuscaloosa, and Northport. They were in Dallas's clinics. They were um, in the ED. They were in a NICU, which is a neonatal intensive care unit. They were in a well baby nursery. They were actually on campus one day with our high fidelity mannequin, which is what you are seeing right here in this picture. This mannequin can talk to you. This mannequin can sweat. This mannequin can vomit. This mannequin can bleed. He can do pretty much everything. 
So we have, <laughs> so we have this um, as part of our simulated labs. These students actually get to go in there. They have a scenario. They go in there and they treat this mannequin just like they would a regular patient. You know, we have a glass that we can see them. They can't see us. And we're in the background controlling. A lot of times they hear our voices coming out from him. So they get kind of freaked out about that. <laughs> so, um, so as many of this group, they were um, assessing blood pressures. They were checking his vital signs and trying to figure out what was going on with him. So we do have this high fidelity mannequin and we love to use him. Um, it is competitive. Nursing school is competitive. We only have a set number of admissions that we can accept every year. Um, we have high standards. We have to have high standards because when, we get, when they get out, we want employers to say, well, they came here, they were trained well, like Ms. Dr. Cobb said. We want them to know what they are doing when they get out, and our graduates do. We have policy graduates. When they get out, they are prepared to take that national licensure, to get that license, and to get out and work in that field. And here's um, just some more pictures. Employers want you to be a nurse, and then this is our um, high fidelity mannequin as well, it's a little bit closer up. She's administering oxygen. He must have had some kind of respiratory stuff going on. So they're putting oxygen on him and they're trying to get him where he doesn't code on them. Um, employers want you to be nurses. Every spring we have employers call, want to come, bring lunch, talk to our students, fill out applications. And a lot of times we don't have enough spots for as many employers are wanting to come to hire graduates. So what can high school students do now? What kind of students does it take to get into nursing school? We want students who are strong in math and science. If you have an allied health class at your facility, we would love for them to be already a part of that and go ahead and get some of that allied health experience. We now have new admission criteria that we just implemented in the spring, which um, the students will have to have a 3.0 and 4 classes to be accepted, which is our AMP 1, our anatomy and physiology 1, English 1, general psych, and then a fine art class. You have to have a 3.0 in those four classes to be admitted to our program, as well as pass on an admission test. So we have more information available about that at our booth. So why do you go to nursing? There's just something about this place. <laughs> it's indescribable. Just I, I encourage you to encourage your students, encourage your families just to come take a look at us because once they come and see us and leave, they'll know it's just something. Okay? Thank you.